Kolisa Deshana, welcome from uh, well, Joe Public United. Welcome to what the marketing wars uh, on the Ashraf Garda shoulder. I would think that uh, what's happened to Joe Public United is anything but a war, isn't it? <laughs> indeed, indeed. We're super excited. We're extremely um, happy that we're finally at this point. Uh, and we're excited about what that will mean for our future, Ashraf. Thank you. Okay, now, you know, I just created this this marketing feature on my show a couple of weeks, and already the issue of transformation has been like, top of the agenda. So we've had many different takes of it, including uh, Avatar and then the guys from the ACA and, and GCIS, etc. Now, therefore, I think it's it's significant what, what has happened uh, to your to your agency, right? So perhaps, I mean, to tell us exactly what, what, what has happened. So essentially what has happened um, at Joe Public is that we have embarked on a uh, transformation deal. And what you have is that um, the, 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 the white shareholding has come down to 40%. And what we have essentially done is that we've, we have an equity partner that has come um, and they are in the form of Sinatra Capital. Uh, and, and, and they have, uh, come to fund and to um, buy a part of the company. And what has happened is that 26% uh, of, of, of the risk um, is taken up by our uh, a management team called Ikam Balagusasa, which includes myself, which includes Kutala, and which includes Umbume Ngobese, who have been with the company for a while now. Okay, so, so three people were part of Joe Public, and, and now you're owners, yes. right? And, and then you have a separate yes. investment arm of people who are not connected to Joe Public whatsoever, and we'll talk about them second, right? Um, from, from, the, from the white owners, part of, and of course, I've, I've certainly known uh, Pepe Murray and Gareth Lack, and I've known what they've done over the years, right? Um, g give us an insight into, into what happened first. I mean, who had a conversation about... Uh, a need to not just transform in terms of positions, but to change equity. Give us an insight into that. So I think we've been on a transformation journey now, probably for the last 10 to 11 years, um, since we bought the company back. Um, since Pepe and Gareth and Laurent, who's our third uh, shareholder, um, since the company was bought back from uh, FCB, and, and, and I think uh, what, what, what naturally started to happen is that as the company, uh, things started to go away. We picked up some good clients. The business was in good health. And around the time that this was happening, uh, by the way, a catalyst to this happening was us finding our purpose as a business. So that became a driver for the business. And so what happened thereafter is that uh, naturally, as you, as, you, as you get higher up, in terms of of of, um, of, of uh, business health, of creative rankings, etc., there is obviously interest um, that will come from outside investors, uh, particularly from international investors. And we've been sitting uh, for a couple of years now, where we've been sitting with those kind of offers on the table, but none of them seem to really meet our vision um, that we had for the company, and they didn't seem to be in line with what we wanted to do, uh, being an aid that has bought themselves from an international uh, uh, company. So I think what then happened is that we, we came to the conclusion that actually we want to stay independent, and we think that we would like to do a deal that is, that is it, it, it's anchored in this country, it's anchored in, in, in our staff, and, and, that's, and, and I think it was that kind of, of realization that made us then start this process, which, is, which in itself was quite a process, because we had quite a few um, potential uh, investors that we spoke to. Uh, but, is, but eventually, I think there was a, a great synergy between ourselves and Sinatra Capital, and they saw the vision that we saw, and, and, and we saw the vision that they saw in our company, and, 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 and that's how the deal came to be. And, and do, do I take it then the, the three um, players part of management, including yourself in this case here, right? The, the equity that, that you own, yeah. why, why, is it, why, why is it set up in a, in a company? Meaning, why is it not given to Tolisa Deshana individually? 
Um, the main reason for that is um, is because uh, I think the vision that we have, Ashraf, is that uh, the more we grow the business, uh, the more we can start to expand uh, our transformation. We don't think that this is the end of our transformation journey. And, and, and we know that this sets us up in a position where we can we can start to 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 go for more business. Uh, we've got a really really strong team now, and 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 I think for me what's remarkable, for instance, is that the the, the management team that has brought the company to this place has been together probably for the last ten to twelve years, and uh, and and it's still going to be together going forward to drive because growth. that's significant, right? So I think that in in a sense that. We all know why transformation in our country is important. We all know what BEE means, but but there has been many BEE deals, right? Uh, morally correct, but in practice that have just not worked out because uh, there's there's been literal window shopping on the one hand. There's been others where people have been brought in with yeah. no interest in the company whatsoever, just to satisfy a certain agenda. Now, now that's not the case with what's happened at Joe Public United. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, I mean, if you look at this deal, we are essentially looking at eight founding shareholders that have included um, the 40% and the three shareholders in Ikamba mm -hmm. So the context is actually quite important to understand because it gives us and Sinatra great comfort to know that the founding shareholders still have good vested interest in the organization. So it's in this regard that we see the split balance as healthy. And also, it's important to remember that 60% of the company is black-owned. So, yes, we do this. We do see this as genuine transformation. Mm. You you spoke about the the company finding its purpose, right? What 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 is the purpose of Joe Public? The purpose of Joe Public um, is growth. We believe in the growth of our people, and we believe that if we if we if we feed the growth of our people, it impacts the growth of our clients. And it, in turn, impacts the growth of our country. So everything that we do as a company, we always uh, measure up against those three pillars. As uh, for us, is a perfect epitome of something that meets all three of the of, of that criteria. And it, it was a it was the right thing mm. that we felt for us to. Now I've seen in the in the press release uh, that that's emerged today, uh, and and of course just other forms of media, the, the specific point brought up was not like Joe Public original shareholders have sold the stake. It's like it's now the largest black majority owned agency. Um, what do you feel about the emphasis on that point? It's So it's a black majority owned agency and it's the largest of the black majority owned agencies in the country. Uh, and, and that's almost been punctuated, right? What, what do you feel about that? <laughs> Um, I think that for me, um, I think that that's a very, very important point, um, because generally what would what for me, the, and perhaps there is a bias here, I think that the story of Joe Public is a remarkable one in that the company bought, bought itself back in, you know, in 2009 and, and the company has built itself up from that. And, and for me, the significance of then being able to take everything that we've built up until this point and to say that the right thing is to transform the company. Um, and we believe that that's the right thing for our future. And also to say that in the space of large agency, there is, there is, there is a large independent agency, which is majority black owned. So I think that that's very important because, um, you know, I speak to a lot of my friends and, 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 and we often talk about the need to, be, to exist in all these different spheres. We need to exist um, where there are smaller agencies. We need to have uh, majority black owned agencies in, in the middle and even in the space of large agencies um, where, where we know that there is representation or there are agencies that are starting to make that kind of change. Because for me, it also gives a challenge to some of the other agencies. Um, who have not yet gotten to that space to, to say that it, it is something that can be done and, in our opinion, something that should be done. Mm. What, what do you make, then, of, of uh, Sinatla Capital coming in with their 34%? Because, I mean, they, they were not actively involved, unlike the three of you, right? Um, what, what's what's yes. the benefit of having them uh, inside your public now? 
So I think I think for me, um, you know, we've we've looked at, as I said, we looked at quite a few people, um, uh, different entities when we were walking into this, and there was just a a a a, a hang of a, a a chemistry between us as businesses. When we looked at their businesses, they've got a solid business, they've got a transformed business, a black-owned business, um, and 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 they've got a track record um, of the kind of, of of investments that they make. And for them, when they looked at us, the huge potential, and they believed in what it is that we that we are trying to do. And I think for me, uh, something that we've already seen give so much value to us is to actually have people that are not from just within the industry to help the company in a way that you know that it can double in a couple of years. Uh, to have different voices in the room. To have, um, I mean, uh, you know, to have the likes of Owen. Uh, to have the like of Mama Zanelli, there are so many people now in our boardroom that are that are challenging some of the of the decisions that we're making. Isn't that are that are and, and the decisions to, that we make. To many people in the boardroom, maybe wouldn't that be? I mean, there's a certain harmony that's been put in place. I mean, this will disrupt the harmony, won't it? Absolutely, but I think uh, this is what happens when you've got entities that respect each other. We've got a great deal of respect for each other. Um, Sinatla understands that there is there is a reason why they came to us and and that is the that that was part of, of of the reason why i think that they wanted to get in involved in a deal where it's not just about the 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 the, the exchange of of the, a financial exchange mm -hmm. or anything like that but essentially it's about taking something and carrying on the growth journey you can imagine the kind of opportunities that are also going to own up uh, sorry that are also going to open up through our partnership with them um, so I, I just think, uh, as far as we see it, it's a win-win for everybody, and I think we are all going to grow. How, how much did that thirty-four percent stake cost them? <laughs> Unfortunately, we are not at liberty to uh, divulge oh. any of those. Oh, details. I wish you were a public company. Then we'll find out pretty soon, anyway, right? But having said all of that, uh, I mean, there would be return on investment. They would expect it. Everybody would expect it. They would. You guys would do it now as as new equity owners as well. So, so yeah, in terms yeah. of, you made the point about the expectation is your public doubling, but we are in a, in a hostile terrain now in terms of the economic impact or downturn felt by uh, COVID-19. I know you guys have lost uh, the, the, the big Edgars or Adcon agency. It's a, it's a massive account, right? Um, yeah. How are you going to find ways to double up to satisfy the hunger of, of new shareholders? So I think for me, there's, there's two things um, when I think of, of a response to that. I think um, if you take, to expect a return on your investment is, is the most natural thing that you, that you would expect as an investor. I think if you look at Joe Public standing uh, in, 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 in the South African uh, advertising landscape, it's, it's a really, really healthy business. It's one of the top two creatively um, and, 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 and really pro a profitable business. So I think to expect that return on investment uh, for me makes complete sense. But then at the same time, I think that this is why it is so important to have the right partners on board. Because when it comes to uh, tragedies like COVID-19, uh, you are then able to have things that are dynamic in the context of what is going on. How do we sell through this? And, and because we are able to have those kind of, of, of conversations, we have already seen that uh, the impact that's been felt on our business has been, has been, has been severe as it's been for everybody else's. But, but it, it not to the extent where, for instance, where we've had to lay off our staff um, and, 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 make, and take quite drastic measures. And I think also with our partners, we are able to then look at, okay, so how do we adjust um, how do we factor in what it is that's going on? Because we don't believe that it's just about the money. Because without the people and without being taking, being able to take care of the of the of the health of the business, we won't be able to get to any of those of the of those milestones anyway. It's an interesting thing you say because I mean, I've, on on a separate, I mean, we've created a separate platform called the Champion South Africa podcast, and I'd spoken to to your partner, Pepe Maria, about his own, you know, growing greatness and his book and, and his methods, right? Uh, and one of the things he said to me, and it's worth watching and, and listening to that podcast as well, uh, is, is for now, Joe Public putting people first uh, and, and taking profit yeah. out of the equation. I mean, my, my question is, how long can that last? 
Um, I, you know, you know, it's it's it's. It's a decision that I think we, we have made, Ashraf. Um, even uh, I think most of our clients, if you were to speak to them, there is we're going over and above to add value to them in this time. Because there's also an understanding from our side that a lot of the partners that we have are probably facing this. In fact, not probably, in most cases are facing this in a, in a way lots worse than we are because they employ a lot more people. So we've decided that now is the time for real partnership and now is the time for adding real value. And we believe that those kind of investments, um, just in, in being human towards the people who, who, who help us with these livelihoods, will pay off in the long run, even if it's just to save one job within our organization. Mm. Let, let me end with, uh, with where it all starts, the issue of transformation. So in a couple of weeks that we've started this Marketing Wars feature on the show, uh, issue of transformation uppermost, I've chatted to people like Belly and Gubani, I've chatted to representatives from the ACA and GCIS and Tabang as well. Uh, there's been so many. So what is your take? I mean, because what has happened here is a, a manifestation of a company transforming from within, right? What then is your thoughts on, on the general state of transformation in your in the advertising industry? So I, I believe that um, advertising transformation is, is, is long overdue. Um, I believe that uh, it, it and, and real transformation um, deals that, 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 that actually benefit uh, not just people that come from the outside, but actually the people that have built the organizations that, that have been vital to the organization's uh, ascendance. And, and I think, you know, when, 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 when I think of where we are as an industry, I think that we've got a lot of work to do. I think of many agencies um, that have done a lot of work and yet uh, I think of some agencies that haven't done nearly uh, what 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 needs to be done. So for me, for instance, when I look at this, if if I think of it in the in the context of why is it a landmark uh, a transaction in, in in my opinion, you can look at the the, the fact that uh, ourselves being where we are, the the key highlights for us is the fact that it 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 it, it includes people from within the business. Uh, that have been with the business for years. Uh, these are strong bonds and relationships that have formed over time. Uh, there is unity in, in our management and our values as partners. Uh, it's important that our shareholders have their own skin in the game uh, to, 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 to be motivated to grow this business to something a lot more. So I think that for me, the more we start to really, really look at what are we doing and what are we saying with these deals and are we really, really changing people's lives? Uh, when we make these deals, or are we just doing them to have a license to trade? Because, the, I, you know, I, I was saying to someone that, uh, you know, it could have been so easy for us to do this kind of transaction and very few people actually benefit. But for us, we've got much longer to, long to, longer term view. And we believe that our being independent is one of our and our being very involved in this business, uh, whether it's a small client or a big one is that's part of what makes us who we are, and that's part of what we believe will grow our people, our clients, and indeed, at the end, our country. Well, I've often spoken about you or to you as a Kulisa Deshana, one of the one of the big shots at Joe Public United, but I now can say officially, uh, one of the bosses at Joe Public United has got a very nice ring to it, Kulisa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. And that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.